with diverse flora and fauna, magnificent natural landscapes, and an ecological biosphere that supports life. This wondrous planet is our earthly home. From our animal co-inhabitants to the lush rainforests and life-giving soil, we cherish all these as gifts from the Creator. It is a common theme in the world's major faiths that during our temporary stay here, we should be good stewards of Mother Earth. Throughout the years, Supreme Master Ching Hai has shared the message of leading a balanced life while following a spiritual path. Not only we must nourish our spirits, but we share the responsibility to care for nature and our fellow beings. In light of recent scientific evidence, stressing the grave state of our planet caused by climate change, Supreme Master Ching Hai affirms the important message she has noted for over the past two decades. We must be vegetarian, meaning an animal-free diet, and practice sustainable living. Today we present to you Supreme Master Ching Hai's discussion on climate change entitled, Benevolent Messages from Mars, Be Virtuous and Save the Earth via video conference with Supreme Master Television staff in Los Angeles, California, USA, on January 18, 2009. Hi, Master. Hi. I just wanted to um, further discuss about what life is like on Mars and could you please tell us um, when and how do Martians come up from the ground? They come up sometimes when necessary, okay? Let me see if I have more information for you. Okay, they come up to surface, you know, only when truly necessary. You know, in uh, insulated cars, but they have flying cars. <laughs> either uh, surveying the planet's surface or visit each other's in a little bit more distance, but uh, not connected uh, cities, where there are no road underground is connected or not possible to have road. And uh, they come out for special supplying, you know, and delivering for each other's stuff. Yes, wow, that's amazing. Let me see if I have any more, just to make sure, eh? Be patient, please. Yes, Master. Yeah. I wish I had to organize it and do something nicer, but it's all, you know, like this. Look. <laughs> see what I mean? <laughs> different even colors, because I have different time to do this thing. I cannot look at that, yeah? Then I didn't even have time to do it all in one go. This kind of research you don't just do it in one session of meditation. It comes now and again. Sometimes by uh, intention from my part, sometimes uh, they just uh, give me some information, you know, without asking. So I forgot all about it, and uh, so I haven't got time to uh, do it. I put it in my bag and carry it everywhere up to now. Can you believe it? <laughs> and now because you asked, I dig them out for you. Thank you, Master. Some more here, okay. That is, mm hmm. You know, when they travel, they have tanks of oxygen. This is extra that I have just found. Oxygen tanks, and then they have masks. They have very insulated cars. That's for sure, huh? You can imagine, right? Okay, now something else here. They have big public gardens with flowers and grass and trees. The highest will be about three meter high only, yeah? Wow. The highest house is about three stories. Remember, they dig the tunnel is about 10 meter and five stories high, so they need to have a little bit space on top of their house. So they have the highest house will be like three stories, mostly next to river, eh? and only mud houses, mud houses. No concrete, no cement house. Oh, thank you, Master. I'm looking. Uh, please, be patient, be patient. I truly was busy, huh? And forgot. This kind of information, even it takes a few days to put them together. I think that's just about it then, huh? 
Well, you mentioned about the oxygen tanks. Actually, that was my next question. I wanted to ask, how do Martians breathe? Dear God, <laughs> <laughs> I know they breathe all right. <laughs> but the breathing <laughs> information, okay, it's been a long time and I wrote it down. Okay, they produce oxygen by special techniques that they invented with the time from the underground water, yes? And they recycle water a lot and they recycle the air also whenever possible. Of course, they filter the air as much as they can. As I told you, they live under the ground, but at the least polluted area. So they filter the air somewhat to use whatever they can, and they produce oxygen from the underground water where they use. And they pump up the methane and the other gases onto the surface of Mars. Maybe that is the reason why scientists have found some methane cloud recently. Hmm? Makes sense? Yes, it does. I wanted to ask, what kind of governments do Martians have? What kind of government? Okay, okay. They have like, uh, almost like non-governmental kind of system the way we have, okay? People gather together and they elect uh, the wise persons who are absolutely unconditional and uh, caring and honorable, you know, trustworthy, of course, in their government, there's no bribery and no judiciary system even. Everyone live in mutual respect and harmony and uh, respecting the regulations of the planet. Let me check if anything else we should have. So there's no conflict, you know, no competitions. Everyone is free to go anywhere they want and do anything they want. And of course they know what to do. They don't do anything that is destructive or damaging or uh, you know, harmful to anyone on the planet and the planet itself. You know, everything is free anyway. So nobody steal anything, okay? Wow. Mm, let me check. Uh, government, government, okay. The government doesn't control people. Yes, because people have discipline. Uh, you know, like some government, they control how many children we should have because of our planet is overpopulated and people eat too much. And so the people on the planet worry about hunger and uh, robbery and all that and war, but over there they don't worry about it because they share everything. Every family, you know, automatically has like one or two or three children maximum. Uh, they use different control methods. They don't use the pills. They use a natural method, yeah? They don't have uh, contraceptive pills. They don't have abortion. And they live together as partners. There's no marriage per se, like you have to go to sign contract or anything like that, uh, or for official certificate like us, you know, like us here. But they live together by love and by mutual respect and uh, commitment like partners for life. And there's no divorce over there. Wow. Okay? Right. Sounds like Good. heaven. Would you like to live there, huh? Mm. Yes, it would be nice. <laughs> okay, love, uh, let me check if anything else. I'm just finding for you. I'm still looking. As I have told you, they, they select wise people for their leaders, yeah? The enlightened beings. And uh, they are happy folks, you know? Uh, <laughs> Sometimes I miss out something, but I give you here and there. Oh, where are my stuff? Mm, wait a minute. Be, be patient, be patient, okay? I'm looking through my books. <laughs> Please take your time. <laughs> my stickers and my books, yeah. Oh, they have a queen now, at the moment. Oh, wow. Wow, they have a queen, uh, but some times ago they had kings. They could have kings and queens, it doesn't matter. They are selected by people uh, for wisdom, for spiritual attainment, and they are chosen by insight knowledge, not by our look and not by uh, a public relation advertisement. Yes. So the elderly, the wise person, the enlightened master would sit and look inside who is the most worthy. They can be picked anywhere, from any house, any street. It's not passed down by heritage. 
by DNA or genetic or because uh, of family lineage, you know? So it can always change. You know, anyone, even the street sweepers can be queen and king if, if they are enlightened enough and wise and virtuous. That is the criteria to be a leader on Mars right now because they are chosen by insight knowledge, by meditative wisdom. Nobody can cheat <laughs> with votes, <laughs> you know, nobody can bribe the voters, <laughs> nobody can buy any voters, <laughs> nobody can have like party or anything like that. No parties except the wise people. There's no political parties. Probably there's some more for you. I'm checking, okay? I'm checking. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Checking, checking. Mm. Now they have uh, all together just like one nation with the council of the wise to guide them in most of the matters. So there's a queen and a council? Yes, yes. The queen, also the councils of the wise. Um... I check if anything else for you here. I think that's just about it, huh? Mm. So what is the role of the queen then? Um, if if they don't tell Martians what to do? Oh, just in case somebody needs some advice, for example, yes. Or if there are anything else that uh, they can improve their lifestyle for their people, yes. That's it. There's nothing like uh, negative, yeah. The queen is there for people when they have something to ask because the queen and the wise council are wise. Not all the citizens on Mars are as wise as they are. They are there like a leader and teacher and friends and councils, yes. The council of the wise, they are not chosen even by age, you know? Not like elder, you know? Uh, they are not chosen by age but by wisdom and spiritual levels. You cannot call this government, you know, it's just a group of council, yes, and the queen, you know, and, you know, whoever are selected into this so-called government, they have job to do. They're not there just to get salary. They don't get any salary. They will have the same like everybody else. There is no police, eh, yeah, no army, no weapons. Uh, they, they have regulations, yes, that everybody respect and follow. There's no questions about the authority of the government, no revolution, nothing like that. So it's actually it's very harmonious where, where they live. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you ever plan to write a book about Martians no, someday? No, no, honey, if I have time, oh my God. <laughs> you must be joking. You know, I was thinking that I could the, write the three books of the animals. That was when, you know, I really drove myself crazy. <laughs> and now even if I want to drive myself that crazy, I don't even have time to drive, okay? <laughs> Understand. Every day, very, very busy. Actually, we don't need to write a book about Mars. What for? What do you want to write a book for? It's hmm? so exciting. <laughs> exciting, so interesting. yeah? My goodness, okay. Well, but I'm telling you everything you need to know now, so I think there's no need for a book, is there? Yes, thank you, Master. You're welcome. Yes, I have a question, Master. Yeah. What do the Martians look like? Oh. They look like you. <laughs> really? They look like us, yes. They look similar to us, but they are just uh, better looking. Wow. Yeah. They are like more healthy looking, and more radiant, and more lovely. Uh, the, their look are more serene, more rested, yeah? Their face, you know, their look are more benevolent than most of us on the planet. Also, how long do they live? They can live up to 200 years old. Wow. 200 years old. Yeah, most of them live very long. They don't have stress, you see, honey? They don't have stress. They don't have uh, uh, much pollution to give them this kind of uh, radical agent that aged them so fast. You see, their life is harmonious, peaceful. 
loving relationship. Everybody cooperate with each other and respect life and helping each other in any way they can. They share everything. This is a beautiful way of life. So they live long, of course. Thank you, Master. One more thing, you know? Even if they age, you know, like us, but they age very gracefully. Even when they are very old, they still look very young. They look young until the day they die, much younger than uh, what we are in the same age here, for example, yeah? Uh, oh, you, you would never be able to tell their age when you look at them. <laughs> Very young. They stay young long, long time. Thank you for your company on today's Between Master and Disciples, here on Supreme Master Television. Tune in tomorrow for part three of Supreme Master Ching Hai's fascinating discussion titled, Benevolent Messages from Mars, Be Virtuous and Save the Earth. And now, Animal World, Our Co-Inhabitants, is coming up next, right after Noteworthy News. With heaven's grace, may all beings live harmoniously in dignity and respect. <laughs>